Yeah, still like here. I'll um, continue with normal to make sure that, you know, it's it, um, it not buffing and you're not hearing what I'm saying, now, right? Right, so that, that's an example of the law. That's showing that what? She under the law. None of that has been abolished. And if you do that, it have a penalty fate, right? You say, wherefore, my brethren, ye also have become dead to the law by the body of Mashiach, that ye should be married to another, which is what? Um, idolatry. You understand? Because the Most High said what? As men, we are married unto him through Mashiach. So we can't go unto other gods. We can't be joined unto another. The same way spiritually. As how a woman, as how a woman if she joined to us, she can't join to somebody else unless we are dead. We can't join unto no other God but the Mosai. And the Mosai the Mosai don't die. You understand? Like with a man, if he died, his woman could go unto our next man. The Mosai don't die. He's our spiritual husband forever. Right? He said he should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruits unto the Mosai. It say, for when we were in the flesh, the motions of sin, which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. Because the wages, the wages of sin is what? The wages of sin is death. They say, but now we are delivered from the law that being dead wherein we were held that we should serve in newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter, right? So they say, now what? Because we are in Mashiach, we, we, are, we are dead to the law as people like to talk about and they don't understand what I mean, Right? But that don't mean that you could just sin anymore and it's a cool scene. You understand? Through Mashiach, even though we might transgress sometimes, through him we could be forgiven for our sins. That doesn't mean that we have liberty to sin. You understand? That doesn't mean we have liberty to sin. And there's the point in, the, in um, verse 7 here. It says, what shall we say then? Is the law sin? It says, God forbid. Nay. I have not known sin but by the law. For I had not known lust except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. So the law is where I teach you what sin is. I'll jump to verse 14. It say, For we know that the law is spiritual. But I am carnal, sold unto sin. And the scriptures talk about that in James. I think it's James 4. Talk about the war in your members. And James, James wouldn't talk about the war in your members trying to, tr trying to get to sin if sin wasn't a problem. If sin was no longer a problem, it would, they would never be trying to fight so hard against it. That makes no sense, right? It say, for that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that I do not. But what I hate, that I do. And what is that which he hates? He hates sin. Because the scriptures say in, in Matthew, it says a servant should be as his Lord. So if the, if, the, if, the, if the Lord don't like sin, you're supposed to not like sin either. If you're ready of the Lord, you're not supposed to like sin either. Even though it might happen from time to time, it's not supposed to be something you're supposed to be comfortable or cool about. It's something you're supposed to dislike. It's not that way you're talking about. It's that which I hate, that I do, which is transgress. Because your flesh does go off at times. Right? It says, if then I do that which I would not, I consent unto I consent unto the law that is good. Right? It says, now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Right? For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. For the, script, the scriptures talk about your flesh being what? Being subjected unto vanity. For to, for to will is present with me, but how to perform that, 
that which is good I find not because it's difficult to actually slack here. It's difficult to actually keep the keep to keep the keep the law. In a sense where you will have times where it will be difficult for you. It would. Especially when in a kingdom where the kingdom actually set up to, to help you not keep the law. <laughs> it's difficult sometimes. Right? It is. It's very difficult sometimes. All right, you see, um, verse, verse 21, it say, verse 21, it say, I find then the law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of the Most High after the inward man. Right? Say delight in the law. Which is how the righteous is supposed to be, law abiding. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind. And that is the flesh warring against the spirit. Even though you might want to keep the law sometimes, it's be difficult because you know your flesh does cause it to go off from time to time. Now he would never have that problem if the law was abolished and you could sin freely. And feel that because the truly blood, as they talk about in Christianity, that means that now it's okay to sin. No. If that was the case, he wouldn't have that problem. He would just be living. You understand? All these scriptures are cut to these Christians who like to talk that rubbish. And bringing, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. So all these scriptures showing you that what? The law is important. The law is important. Even though it is not the deciding factor, you understand, for the say that a person can't be saved just because, you know, they might have committed some transgressions in their life. That doesn't mean that you could go about just committing sin willingly and think to yourself that you will get away with it. And I'll bring that, um, I'll bring that in Hebrews. I'll bring down Hebrews quick, right? <clears throat> Hebrews, um, Hebrews ten, verse twenty. Hebrews 10 verse 25 and 26, right? Hebrews 10 verse 26, it says, For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the, of the truth, there remaineth no sacrifice for sin. And this goes to people who actually know, like how I know that to this, to this in depth that I'm not supposed to be doing certain things. You understand? I will be treated differently. Just like how we talk about in Luke, it says that he that know it, and do it things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with many stripes. That is Luke um, 12 verse 4 from 47 somewhere around there. I ain't going to go into it but you're just paraphrasing. From 47 go down to talk about that. When you actually know the truth and you're still doing sin. You're held accountable faith on a different level compared to somebody who didn't know. Right? Say verse 27. Right? Hebrews 10 27 is say. But a certain fearful look, looking of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. Right? It's the he that despised Moses' Moses' law died without mercy on the two or three witnesses. And that is how serious the law was considered back then. Any time of Moses, you couldn't leave your house on the Sabbath. If you left your house on the Sabbath, you're supposed to be put to death. Now we're under grace now that sometimes, you know, sometimes you might have to work on the Sabbath and you wouldn't be able to stay home for the Sabbath. You understand? There are certain things in this kingdom of captivity you can't be able to keep because this system built against us keeping the law. There are certain things that you'll be eating. You wouldn't, you wouldn't even know that it had things abominable in your food that the law say not to eat. 
But with those two examples, does that mean that because you're under grace and it's the Sabbath, that means you'll go out and lime on the Sabbath? No. Because, because it might have things in certain foods that you might eat that you mightn't be aware of. And you'll be, you'll, you'll be aware of that. That you might have things in the food you mightn't be aware of. Does that mean you'll just go and eat pork? No. You understand? It's not like that. The grace is for your mishaps. The grace is for where as if it had things that you're not able to keep. You understand? Or you might falter in some way. You could pray for mercy and you'll receive grace. It's not to say that you could just go and do whatever you want and think you'll get away with it. It's not a get out of jail free. You understand? You still have to try to keep these things put in the scriptures. You wouldn't be able to do it perfectly and that's where the grace comes in. Right? I'll go to where I was going to originally. Matthew. Matthew 5, right? I never have a saying in the world that I say from the horse's mouth. Yeah, that's why I'm there. It's from the Messiah's mouth himself, right? It's from the Messiah's mouth himself. It say uh, Matthew 5 verse 17. It say, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy but to fulfill. And we went through that in Acts. Where they talk about uh, Anne and also in, um, in Luke. What did he come to fulfill? The things that were written of him. He didn't come to say, well, now you can sin freely and you know you'll get away with it. He didn't say that. Right? Verse 18, it says, For very I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. So like I say before, um, in the situation with sacrifices, he was the ultimate sacrifice. So we don't sacrifice actual bullocks and lambs and turtle doves anymore because he was our ultimate sacrifice so that's that sacrifice and become redundant right we're not supposed to be doing that anymore because he's the ultimate sacrifice but homosexuality adultery lying stealing you understand defrauding your neighbor all these different things in the law still applies it's not just the ten commandments it's not just two commandments it are many different laws that apply but we wouldn't be able to keep all 100% in this kingdom. Even when it, even, it even have a law talking about mixing different materials or linens. You understand? It have a law about planting, planting diverse seeds between each other. We can't be able to keep these things. Now, if a, man, if a, if a brother plants in a garden and he know the law, he will know, well, all right, don't plant this or that. You know, he will try to do what he could do. But in this system, you can't do everything because the system conditioned against us doing what we're supposed to do. Esau set this system up that way. Esau is who? The so-called white man, according to the scriptures. He set laws up in a way that we would not be able to keep the law how we're supposed to. So we do what we could. And that is where the grace is coming for what we can't or for our mishaps. It's not to tell you that you could do whatever you want. It's not for that. Right? Matthew um, 5 verse 19, it says, Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. And this is from the boss mouth. So what are you telling you? You're telling you don't, don't sin. You will have your mishaps. Things, things happen sometimes. You're not supposed to be sinning willfully. Right? But whosoever shall do and teach them do the commandments and teach them to others. It said the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So what I tell you? From the boss mouth himself, what does that tell you? He's supposed to be keeping the law. But people will fight against that. Why? Because they want to do what they want to do. You understand? You tell women they shouldn't wear pants, you go show them in the law. You know it against the law to wear pants. They like wearing pants. They find it convenient. You know, it's how the butt printing out and guys just compliment them. It's convenient for them to wear pants. So they'll rebel against it. Why? Because of the desires, their own personal desires. And that's why a lot of people does, does rebel against the law. Even though they will show them it, they will always gravitate to what it is they want to hear. Why? Because of the desires of their hearts. And I'll bring that scripture real quick. That is what has caused a lot of jakes to go off. You will tell them what the law says. And you will show them that the law says it. And they will tell themselves, no, I don't need to do this or that. 
and they will try to defend that belief. Why? Because the desires of their hearts is different. So that you're trying to straighten up my little thing. Seeing some doggies in my Bible. Alright. Like no doggies in my Bible. Oh, give me a second. Let me get this precept. I believe that is um I believe that is Galatians 4. It's Galatians or Ephesians, I sometimes forget two of them is mixed map sometimes. Right. Ephesians. Ephesians 4 start from 17, right? And this is a good example of Jakes. When you tell them the correct thing, they just want to tell themselves what they want to hear. Why? It say um, Ephesians 4, 17, start from 17. It say, this I say therefore and testify in the Lord. Testify this in the Lord, right? That ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk. And the Gentiles, you know, I might have to do a video on that, you know, talking about what the Gentiles are. Because people, even on their understanding of the Gentiles, are different to what Gentiles actually mean in the scriptures. They don't know that it have two different meanings of Gentiles. But when they translate it to English, they just tell you Gentile. They don't specify which one. But there are two different types. There are one which is a normal heathen, somebody from a heathen nation who is not of Israel. And there's somebody who is from the nation of Israel but went in, in onto the Gentiles and picked up their customs and live as they do. They are classed as being as what a gen, in a Gentile state of mind, which is what I talk about in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 2, I believe. When he tell them in times past they were Gentiles, carried on to dumb idols, because they were following the, the customs of the heathens. So they were classed as being in a Gentile state of mind. Right? So it had two different types of Gentiles, right? He's saying here in Ephesians, what is saying? It said, This I say therefore. And testify in the Lord that ye, that he, ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk. So we're not supposed to be walking according to those hedonistic customs. You understand? Either the customs of the heathen or the customs of our people who follow the heathen. We're not supposed to be walking as either of them. Right? It say in the vanity of their mind. Right? It say having their understanding darkened. Being alienated from the life of the Mosai, and where is the life of the Mosai? Let me get out quick. You know, precepts just come out, it has come out. It has come out. Precepts has just come out. Right? Let me see where is the life of the Mosai. It said, is, um, they John 6 verse 63. It say it is a spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. It say the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So this is the life of the Mosai. This is the spirit, you understand? <clears throat> this is the spirit and the life, which is these, the words, the things that the scriptures say how you're supposed to be and where you're supposed to do, how you're supposed to live. This is the life of the Mosai. But they alienated from that. It say having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of the Mosai through the ignorance that is in them. And our people has been ignorant on two different levels. Ignorant means not knowing, and ignorance means not willing to learn. And they are both. Because a lot of them just be ignorant as in they don't know. And when you teach them, they don't want to hear. Right? It said. Um, being alienated from the life of the Mosai to the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. And that scripture says, go to come to your mind when people talk about God know the heart. Yes, he know your heart. He know your heart is wicked and it's blind because you're going after your own desires and not what he actually tell you to do. You understand? That is blind a lot of people. Their own personal wants and desires. You understand? Instead of doing what they're supposed to do, they just do what they want to do or what they feel like they should do. The Lord don't care about your feelings. I just tell, I just tell people that. I say the Lord do not care about your feelings. In the smallest, and what I mean by that is 
in the smaller scheme of things, you know, you might ask the Lord for something. And you know, he might show you mercy or give aid. But in the larger scheme of things, you can't, you can't say, well, the Lord tell you not to lie and you want to find to yourself, well, lie not so bad, so I will go and lie. And you think you'll be a cool scene. No. If anybody grew up with a parent, or a parent in particular, it could be, it might even be the real mother or father, but a parent. You, never, you can never grow up with your parent and your parent tell you to do something and you want to tell yourself, well, I don't have to do that, you know my heart. They'll break your face. They will break your face. But people, people just think that they could do that with the Lord. But soon to come, they'll find out it's not as simple. They'll find out very soon it's not that simple. Right? I'll go to the James now. I'll close it off for this, right? Unless the Spirit, unless the Spirit will allow, bring out some other, um, some other precept. Right? It's today James 2. I'll start from... Um, James 2, I'll start from 17, right? It says, Even so, faith, if it had not works, is dead, being alone. And I can talk about faith and works earlier on. But it, but it say, um, faith is the belief, but works is the actual fulfillment of your belief. Like, for example, the scriptures say you're supposed to have faith in the scriptures, right? You're supposed to have faith in the Lord, you have faith in the scriptures. You say you believe in the Messiah. That is faith. Did the Messiah not say to go out and teach his, to, to feed his lambs? That is your works. Showing your belief. If you already believe in the Lord, then you will do what the Lord tell you to do. Which is the scriptures. Right? That is faith and works. You can never say you have faith and you don't have works. And the scriptures say what? Faith without works is dead. Right, I'll read it over. It says, even so, faith, if it had not works, is dead being alone. It says, yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. It says, Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. You understand? It says, I will show you my faith by my works, because my works will show my faith. Love is something it will show. Trust is something it will show. Honesty is something it will show. Faith is something it does show. It's not just something you say you feel inside. The scriptures say the love of God is what? That we keep his commandments. It's not something you just say, alright, I love God and you feel it on the inside. You will show the Lord you love him by keeping his commandments. Even though you wouldn't be perfect at it, I say that a lot of times. You wouldn't be perfect at it, but you will try. That is how you just show that love. Not just by saying it on the inside. You can't have a wife and she's saying she loves you and she's being wicked and she's doing what you're saying. And she going and, and she going after other men. She's saying it on the on the outside, but she not showing it. All these things is things that you just show, right? Uh, verse nineteen is say, um, James two verse nineteen is said, "Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devil also believe and tremble. Even devils believe in the Lord." They, they, don't, they, don't, they don't have faith in him because they don't show they don't show that, that, um, that they don't worship him or do what he say but they also believe that he exists so if you, if, you, if you say you believe in the Lord and you're not doing what he say because you're saying you're under grace you're not doing what he say and even devils believe in him but they don't do what he say what makes you any better than devils and really and truly if you say you have faith in the Lord and you don't, do, you don't at least try to do what you say, then you don't believe in the Lord. You're just deceiving yourself. You just, all you're doing is deceiving yourself. Right? It say, um, verse 20, it say, but, but will thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? It say, was not Abraham our father justified by works? It say, when... He had offered Isaac his son upon the altar because he had faith in the Lord but he also showed that faith by what? Doing what the Lord tell him to do. He was going on chop, chop Isaac to pieces. Um, he was going to chop Isaac to pieces if he had to. And that was showing his faith. He already believed. You now there are people out here they, just, they in that spirit where they will say they believe 
But when they see something and the Lord tell them to do, I don't have to do that. But that's how Abraham was justified. But people has justified the self and try to find ways to do it what? Because of the desires of their hearts. That is what they want to do and that's what they're going and do. And they will have a million excuses why they should do that and not do what the Lord say. Because that is the wickedness that dwell in them. In the heart. And to talk about that, I'll jump to it. Same thing like I said. I'll jump to it. That is Jeremiah. This is a good example of Jake's. These are a good example of all people. These are a very good example of all people. Um, Jeremiah 11 verse 8 It says, Yet they obeyed not, nor inclined their ear, but walked every one in, their ima in the imagination of their evil heart. So they didn't incline, they didn't obey the law, they didn't try to do what they were supposed to do. What they did? They walked in the imagination of their evil heart. Which is our people today. Justifying the wickedness constantly. It said, Therefore I will bring upon them all the words of this commandment which I commanded them to do, but they did them not. Jake's again. Right? I read about verse 20. James um, 2 verse 20. It says, But will thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? It says, Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? It says, See, Seest thou how faith wrought with his works? Faith and works came together. Because he, he showed his faith by doing what he was told. He wasn't saying, Well, I'm not grace, so I don't, I don't have to kill my son. You understand? Even though grace wasn't imputed at that back, in, back then, it had a reason why the. the, the um, there are a reason why it is repeated here in James in the New Testament. Because this is an example. You're supposed to be obedient unto the Lord. Right? If it wasn't important, they wouldn't repeat it. Right. It says, See, says, see as thou how, how his faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect. And the scripture was fulfilled which saith, Abraham believed the Mosai. And it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of the Mosai. Even in John, it tell you that. It say, Ye are my friend if you do whatsoever I command me. It didn't say, Ye are my friend if you just believe in me and do whatever you feel like. It didn't say that. Right? So he was classed as a friend of the Mosai, right? It say, ye see, then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. So you see how important your works is. Right? It say likewise also was was not Rahab the Hala justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way. It say, for as the body without the spirit is dead. So faith without works is also dead. So that I show you what is not about telling yourself you're under grace and you can just do whatever you want just because you believe and you have faith. Your faith, your, 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 by faith and works is how you'll be justified, not by faith only. You know, so I hope, I hope the point came across and this was a cut to those who like to think that, you know, they could sin just because they're under grace. It's not so. It is not so. Right? It is not so. Even though it might be under grace and you can't keep the law 100%, you still had to fulfill the law. You still had to do the things that the Lord said to do, how the Lord said to do it. So for those people who like to do what they want and, not, and do it according to how they want and not how the Lord said to do it, you'll be justified for that or you'll be judged for that also. Because you have a precept in Samuel. Alright, a precept in Samuel. We are, we Saul got jacked up for that. Right? The Lord commanded him to do something and he went and do his own thing. Right? So it's not just about fulfilling the law, but you also try to fulfill it to the best of your ability according to how the Lord said to do it. Not how you find or how you feel you should do it. And that is our next stumbling block to Jake's. They like to do things how they like and not how the Lord like. Right? I'll bring this precept and I'll close it off. Lord's will.
All right. Um, This is um this is for Samuel 15. I'll start from 16, right? It said then Samuel said, said unto Saul, Stay, and I will tell thee what the Lord had said to me this night. And he said unto him, Sin say on. And Samuel said, When thou was little and thine in thine own sight, was thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel because Saul was what king over Israel right and the Lord anointed the king over Israel and the Lord sent thee on a journey and said go and utterly destroy the sinners the Amalekites and fight against them until they be consumed so that was his orders right it say wherefore then didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but did fly upon the spoils and, the sh and did evil in the sight of the Lord. Why? Because yes, he went and fought the Amalekites, but he didn't do it how the Lord instructed. He went and do his own thing. The Lord told him to destroy everything, but he kept the spoils. He wasn't supposed to keep the spoils. And that's a lot of people today. They just want to serve the Lord how they want and not how he told them. And that's a big stumbling block to people. Right? It says verse 20, it says, And Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord, and have done, and have gone, Sark here, and have gone the way which the Lord sent me, and have brought Agag, the king of Am Am Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. But the people took of the spoils, sheep and oxen, it said, the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal so, the, so even though they were instructed to destroy everything the people took the spoils and Samuel holds Saul accountable why? because he's the king he could have made them destroy it and he didn't you understand? he, you know, he was he responsible for that and that is sure that you're supposed to do things how the Lord said to do it. It's not about how you find it should be done. If the Lord said to do it like this, you have to try to do it like that. You understand? Not how you find it should be done. Right? Verse 22, it says, and, and Samuel said, had the, had the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifice as in obeying the voice of the Lord? It say, Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. And to hearken than the fat of rams. Obeying the Lord is more important than, than sacrifice. And that's what we people used to do a long time. We people used to do the wickedness and then sacrifice unto the Lord after for atonement. And after a while, the Lord removed that. There was abuse in it. You understand? It say, um, right. It said to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. Verse 23 is safe for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. And it puts a bullet, I believe the law says it puts a bullet in a witch, right? And when you look at the sinners in the end, they will be burnt, which is what? <laughs> for being what? Rebellious. They will be burnt also. You know? Yeah, it's sin it. Supposed to burn a witch. And say, and rebellion is at the sin of what? Witchcraft. <laughs> they will also be burnt. Right? Say, for rebellion is at the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness as, is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he also, ha he also rejected thee from being king. And that is why the majority of our people are rejected. They are rejected. Why? Because they rebel against the Lord. If sin was, was no longer a problem anymore, then why it is they are rejected you understand so i hope it was edifying you know to anybody that listen to it i hope i actually bring the point across but you know as the scriptures say he did have a ear to hear let him hear 
and that would, that would refer to as just having AIDS. Everybody have AIDS unless you have a condition. You understand? That refer to those who actually hear and understand. Because the scriptures say, you know, some, some people would hear, but they would not hear at the same time. They wouldn't be able to understand these things. Only the sheep will hear his voice. Right? So, I hope you're edifying. With that, I'd like to say, Kal Halayim, Wahawadla, Yahweh, Ba'asham Yahushai, Ba'asham Rukakwadash. You know, double honesty apostles and elders of Great Millstone at Ruel. Peace and salutation to the Akimoni world that pushed this through to the four corners of the earth. Right? There's Yaraba from the GMS Trinidad East Camp saying, Shalom, Akim, stay strong.